Okay, welcome back. This is the Audulous module library tutorial, and this is 1.2, Clocking a Sequencer. I'm gonna read through the patch, and then we'll talk about it a little bit afterwards. Okay, so clocks can drive sequencers. Every gate pulse advances the sequencer forward by one step. This sequencer has eight steps, which means it can hold eight notes or values. The gate output of the clock signal goes into the gate input of the sequencer module. So we have the gate output, of the clock signal here is a wire goes into the gate input of the state the eight step sequencer pressing the button on the button tile here will reset both the clock and the sequencer at the same time so we're going to click this button you can see every time i click it it will reset back to the first step and we can see this gate output here goes into the sync input of the clock and the sync input of the sequencer so that way, both of them are reset at the same exact moment. The module library has two sizes of modules, large ones called modules and small ones called tiles. Three tiles can fit into a height of one large module. So you have one, two, three would fit into the height of this module. The sliders change the value of each sequence step. Try the other controls and see what they do. We'll come back to this in a sec. You can use the modulation output of a sequencer to create a sequence of notes for a VCO oscillator or use it to modulate some other parameter. Sequencers output a modulation, a modulation signal which is scaled 0 to 1. So 0 is here and 1 is here at the top and this modulation signal can be used to modulate controls like this for example. You know you, have, you can modulate the hertz and you can see how it speeds up as the uh, output goes higher. Um, or you can later on we'll see how you can use this to control notes that would uh, send values to a oscillator that actually produces sound and you can make these be your note values. So what the big takeaway from this patch is is that you can't use a sequencer without a clock. You need something to drive the sequencer forward uh, one step to the next and that's what the clock's job is to do is to every time this clock pulses, it moves the step sequencer forward. So we can speed up the sequencer this way, or we can slow it down. And you can see how the sequence responds to that. Now, this is one of those cases where the pulse width, it doesn't matter to the sequencer because the, the gate length, the width of the pulse, does nothing to the sequencer. All the sequencer is doing is looking for the rising edge. Every time the pulse starts, that's when the sequencer moves forward one step. Again, you don't have to remember all of this at once, and you can watch the video multiple times to uh, see what I'm talking about, but my suggestion is just go through the videos, absorb the information, and then start making your own uh, patches that you can really start to cement these concepts in your head that, okay, if I have a sequencer, I wanna, I wanna input a sequence of notes, I need a clock, to drive the sequencer. I can't just put the sequencer in there and expect that the sequencer will just move forward. You have to have the clock to sync everything together. Okay, that's all for this patch. We'll see you in the next one.